Hi guys, this is Janine from Pangolin Photo Safaris and today I briefly want to touch on how to choose pictures for black and white editing or which pictures lend themselves best. If you do enjoy our YouTube channel, please don't forget to subscribe and just press the bell button down below, you'll get notified whenever there's new video clips of ours coming out. Alrighty, before we get started, I first want to say editing black and white is a huge field. Whether you shoot in black and white or do it in post-production, how you like it, it's all up to your own imagination and your own taste. So it's a vast field that needs to be covered. Today I just briefly want to touch on which pictures lend themselves best for being turned into a black and white image afterwards. All right. When we talk about black and white image, the first thing that jumps to mind is high contrast images. That's why I love turning leopards into black and white with those black dots on the white light fur and those black eyeliner in the, in the lighter fur. It's perfect. They just simply pop in black and white. But also images where you have a different contrast in your background than what you have to your subjects are great for black and white. This lioness was beautifully illuminated by the sun with some dark deep shadows in the background and I feel it looks absolutely gorgeous how she stands out in front of that almost black. Apart from that, obviously patterns work really well for black and white images. If you have wrinkles, tree trunks, skin patterns that are very deep and cast shadows over the skin, it looks absolutely awesome in black and white. And while we're talking about contrast, obviously also any other type of color variations or light variations on the skin work perfectly well. So here we have it both. We have the pattern, the wrinkles on the skin and the black and white just really enhances it. Plus we have that beautiful white soil that he rubbed himself in that makes him look like a clown. So as we continue this image, you'll see my white balance is entirely off. And if I would edit it in color, I would try and make it a little bit cooler, even though I do love the golden hour. But looking at that image with that tone and tone elephant wall against elephant, I find it almost a little bit boring. What's striking is that white makeup all the way down his trunk. And that just screams black and white at me. So let's give it a quick try. If I turn this into black and white, you'll see it has a very gray filter over it. But I find personally that a black and white image really needs to be black and white. So as you edit, you can really pull your blacks and whites apart. It needs to get some contrast, as we said earlier. So pull the blacks hard. You can always fine adjust it by pulling the shadows back a bit again. I want to bring the highlights down here so that that white comes back out. And I need to bring that overall exposure down a little bit. He is extremely bright. And then you can choose. A black and white image works really well with clarity. The clarity just enhances the added contrast a little bit more. And here you can choose to just pull the clarity in your overall image or be a bit more selective with your adjustment brush and adjust the clarity and maybe even the sharpness just in your subject. And you'll see how beautifully the wrinkles on his trunk come back out. I'm doing this very rough right now to save you guys time, but you get the point. He really starts popping out of the image. But not just high contrast situation per se. Also difficult light situations really lend themselves to black and white editing afterwards. If you shoot into the sun and you struggle getting details, and the colors are blunt and washed out because it's the middle of the day, then black and white can really work so well. And here you need to be careful that you really make your blacks absolutely black and your shadows black. What you don't want is that little bit of detail or maybe that little bit of color within your subject. 
that looks quite funny. So make sure it is a proper black and white image. Same here, you always need the profile for a nice silhouette. So if I go back, you will see the initial image here already has perfectly black elephants. So if you shoot straight into the sun, this is what you get. Your shadow is really, really deep. And you'll be surprised, a silhouette such as that, you're going to have to overexpose by more than two in order for you to get a nice bright sky. There is nothing worse than having a nice black silhouette than, than a sort of eggshell or even gray toned sky. You want that sky to be really bright, to pop. And you'll see this even works halfway in color. We turn that into black and white, boom, and it's done. Super easy to edit. But you will have noticed that all these subjects were fairly far away. Sometimes you might be a bit closer and you still have the same problem. This image was shot at 12.30 during the day in really, really harsh light conditions. And the sun was glaring off that little pond. I was sitting in a hide before lunch and I could really not see much of that baby elephant, but it was so cute next to its mom. So what I decided to do in this instance, I overexposed even more than for a silhouette. I overexposed by plus four and you'll see the initial raw file looks absolutely horrid, washed out, there's no real color. So what I did is I turned it into black and white and made my whites even whiter and I made my black super black. As I said, you can find adjusted with your shadows. Same with this hippo here. It was shot straight into the sun. You can see that the shadow is all over his face. You only have a little bit of sunlight on his back here. So the only thing I could do was overexpose dramatically, so much so that I lost some of the water here, and turn it into a high key image. Please do remember though, not to crop high key images too tight. These things need space to breathe. If you do have a wide background, make use of it. Give it Give it space. It's only when your backgrounds are super busy that you try and avoid them. Otherwise, giving animals a bit of space is nice. But it's not just the really bad light situations that you can turn into black and white. Sometimes it's just a really dull picture. So this was, I would say, a fairly mediocre picture when I started off. I would have liked to shoot it lower but didn't have the option to and I wasn't quite happy with the light. However, just by turning it into black and white, it feels way more dramatic. I do have the contrast in the dog, so that also helps to elevate him. But little imperfections in photographs can be covered up so beautifully in black and white images. This image was shot way before sunrise on an extremely low shutter and I just didn't get it perfectly sharp. You see there's some motion blur in the whiskers, there's some motion blur in the paw, and there is also quite a bit of noise happening here. So between the beautiful pattern of the tree trunk, the beautiful contrast in the leopard and the darker background, I found it looked so much more interesting in black and white than what it did initially in color. So black and white can cover up little flaws really beautifully. And talking about low light conditions, let's have a look. This image was shot on a 20,000 ISO at f2.8, so there was really absolutely no light left. But I loved that scorched earth with that lighter colored line walking across. So if I zoom in, you'll see, ooh, noise is quite an issue. I have a very good camera, but on 20,000 ISO, even my camera does start to struggle. But black and white works extremely well with, with noise. And the reason for that is that it has this antique, almost old fashioned look to it. And it has a bit more grip because there's not all these colors, that extra bit of pattern noise doesn't disrupt so much. So again, if I just turn it into black and white and everything is on naught, it looks pretty unspectacular. If I turn, a little bit more contrast here you'll see that beautifully contrast in the background with the diagonal lines 
and suddenly that noise, I, I don't find it so distracting anymore. It's actually quite a beautiful picture despite all that noise. Same with this little image here, shot on 6400 ISO, not quite as high, but if I zoom in a lot, you'll see there is certain imperfections. There is, number one, a lot of noise, but then there's also a bit of motion. I only shot it in a thousandth of a second. That's almost not enough for water splashing. And on top of that, if I show you the original image, it doesn't really have a very interesting color. It's all sort of tone and tone, a bit of a beige brown. Yes, it was evening light, but there's half shadow on that baby elephant. So I wasn't entirely happy with it. Turning it into black and white and pulling the clarity a bit in that baby elephant elevates the contrast that we need, elevates those little patterns and the water splashes, and suddenly it's a really gorgeous picture. But don't think clarity and black and white saves everything. Black and white pictures have that stigma of being bad images. If you don't have a good image, you turn it into black and white and it saves everything. And that's not necessarily the case. This line was shot very, very early in the morning. Um, also on extremely high ISO, 32,000. There is a lot of no noise, even though it is sharp. If I would turn this into black and white and try and get that contrast out and pull the clarity, whew, it makes your background also look incredibly busy. And even if I just pull the clarity in my line, I don't find this background extremely attractive. And the black and white can do nothing to conceal that. It takes away from that gorgeous line. However, don't turn every single image that's shot on a high ISO into a black and white image. If you shoot a subject up close, noise is not always as disruptive. And if you have a nice color, keep it that way. There is a difference between having no light, as in flat light, and you just don't get any colors out of it, flat because it's extremely overcast, or flat because it's the middle of the day, and having low light, low gorgeous glowing light. So these images were shot in low light on very high ISO, but I love the orange glow in the eyes, complementing the green, very stark contrast. Same with this image, it lives of its glow. Yes, of course, you could turn this into black and white. It could work. There's enough contrast around the eyes, around the body. But really, it's so much more interesting with that beautiful glow after sunset, that purple hour colors. So if you do have nice evening colors or nice colors in your subject, despite all the noise in the world, do not just turn it into black and white. A blue kingfisher lives of the blue in its feathers. So I hope this gave you a little bit of an idea how to choose images to convert them into black and white, how to play with your images and what makes a really nice black and white picture. If you're interested to learn more about black and white, difference between monochrome and black and white, the difference between shooting in black and white and converting into black and white afterwards, there is more videos coming out in the future. So please stay tuned. Until then, Play around with your images. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Bye-bye.